It was supposed to rain all day today, and I did not bring an umbrella. Okay, let's get dressed. Oh, ew. I honest to God, have no idea what to wear because it's supposed to be raining all day, but it's also like in the 70s, and that does not make sense to me. My little California brain is not having it. Jeans. Sweater. So I suppose I should probably say good morning because I'm not going to have time once I get to Manhattan because I have class at 9 a.m. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. I'm a grad student at Parsons School of Design in Manhattan, New York City, which is still weird to me. If you're new here, I'm originally from California. I got my undergrad degree, UC Berkeley, um, just graduated a couple of months ago in anthropology and archaeology. And I decided to um, 180 that and now I'm studying fashion. <laughs> Anyways, it is a second week of school. We had a long weekend because of Labor Day, so it's currently Tuesday. And I'm currently actually quite excited for my morning class. Fashion, history, and mediation, like fashion, comma, history, and mediation. Our readings for today have to do with exactly what I was arguing with another student about in one of my other seminars last week. It was an introduction to a book about taking a global perspective to fashion history. The definition of fashion is too narrow and there are indigenous cultures and prehistoric cultures that engaged in fashion systems and fashion cycles and we don't need to just call them dress or create this weird dichotomy between the traditional and the modern. That's basically what I've been thinking this entire time ever since I joined this program because fashion history and like the literature on fashion history slash theory is very Eurocentric very western focused but i i am definitely rambling right now basically i'm excited for class because we're going to talk about something that i noticed in the literature on fashion history this is the book where i was reading the intro and i honestly just can't wait to get to class and start talking about it <laughs> The dining common is one of the only places where we're allowed to take off our masks so we can eat, obviously. So I picked up coffee from down the street, um, courtesy of James. And I am still skimming my readings that I have to do for class this morning because I was focusing on a writing assignment for a different class. So I was doing the readings and writing for that. So, reading and breakfast. It's like 8 a.m. and I have class in about an hour. So I keep forgetting that I'm supposed to be vlogging today um, because it's weird being back on campus and I'm still trying to adjust to that. Um, but I had my first class, it's called Fashion History and Mediation and we're basically going over fashion evolution and the way things have changed and how we theorize about fashion changes. I had some lunch, the same lunch I get every time I'm in Manhattan and now I'm waiting for my second class to start. Sorry if you can hear the bathroom, I'm right next to the bathroom, which is called Fashioning Time and Memory. I might have to drop this class. I have five classes on my schedule and I'm mostly only supposed to have four right now. So yeah, that is what's going on. I have some thoughts I'd like to share with you guys later when I get home. And yeah, just waiting for class to start.
kind of like like a an investigation into her thought processes and maybe how she would react. Yeah. Well, first of all, I wouldn't call that weakness. That's just having a, a non-traditional background, and that's okay. Okay, I gotta get ready for class. I have filmed a TikTok working on a YouTube video. I met with a client, did my readings for school, now I gotta actually head to class, so. You're cute. I don't normally do outfits of the days because I typically tend to forget and I also can't link most of what I wear because most of what I wear is thrifted and um, vintage, but I wanted to show off my little athletic set. It's like the only athletic set that I've ever actually bought. I don't own athletic sets, but this one was too cute and matched my vintage aesthetic too much to like ignore it. It's from a place called Visual Mood. I'll leave a link to them in the description of this video, but I need to get to class now. I'm trying to get there as early as I can because I need to type up my notes from reading because I don't usually do that. And then I'm usually like, you know, lost in class. So we're gonna go. I thought about changing too because I'm feeling a little self-conscious in this. But now I don't have time, so... I did not mean to get home this late. I haven't really had much of the chan of a chance to really talk about what the experience of starting grad school in New York has been like, but I will say the social aspect of it is difficult. I'm not gonna get into it too much right now, but I did reach out to a second year that I really vibed with at a picnic that the second year's through for the second years and the first years in the program to get to know each other. So she's in some of my classes. I asked her if she wanted to get like coffee or something. So after my class, we went and we got food and we ended up hanging out and chatting for four hours. It wasn't until eight, like 8.15 when I was like, I should probably go home. <laughs> so I'm home. I'm sorry, I did not vlog that entire time and I've been having a hard time remembering to vlog while I'm in the city. I just find it so overwhelming. There's so much going on. I'm thinking about my classes. I'm stressing about the social aspect of life. I'm stressing about the school aspect of life too, but that's another story. Yeah, trying to remember to like vlog and make content on top of all of that is really difficult for me at the moment. It's not that I don't like making content because I do. It's just that, I don't know, maybe it's the ADHD, but my brain only has the ability to hold on to like four pieces of information at a time and right now I'm trying to hold on to 10. So I'm still adjusting, it's a process, but I'm in a good mood even though I was in a bad mood yesterday and this morning because I really enjoyed hanging out with that person and I'm really glad that I got to. Yay! James and I are gonna hang out on FaceTime while we watch Rings of Power together, the second episode. I'm very excited about it as like a little date night, especially because I don't have class tomorrow. I do have stuff for accepted consulting and society. I'm running an accountability workshop, but I don't have to like leave the house to do that. So yeah, I'm gonna call James. I just really like him. Hello, I'm home finally. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Say hi to the camera. Hello, camera. It says hello. Hold on. <gasps> kitty, kitty, kitty. I love her. I understood why it's making me cry though. <laughs> Did you miss them? It's totally understandable. <sighs> oh. 
Yeah, no. Community college also just felt like it was, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. The word that's coming to mind was like a hope and hopeful and moving in a good direction and right now I just, I'm so sad all the time. School used to feel so good and I was really hoping that this would too and it's just not and I don't know what to do about it. I love you. I love you too. Thank you for picking up the phone. Okay, so clearly I'm emotional to some extent. Um, I reached out to a couple of my old professors from community college and undergrad to see if they had time to meet with me to talk about my experience in grad school so far because there's just some stuff I want to talk about with people who have more experience and gain some get some perspective because there's some things that I just I don't I don't know how to articulate and I'm not sure I'm ready to talk about on here that are making the experience really difficult. So I thought, you know, I'll, re I'll reach out to these professors and one of them just got back to me. One of my favorite professors from community college. Finished community college and transferred to Berkeley. I gave some of my community college professors um, cards, you know, like thank you cards for the role that they played in helping me figure out my education. And that was years ago at this point, almost three years ago that I did that. But when he responded to my email, he said, I just reread your card to me a few days ago. I still have it on my piano at home and I needed some inspiration last week, so I reached for it. And it made me cry. I think just because, I don't know, I don't know. I have a lot of reasons. Because <laughs> I feel like I don't have community out here yet because I feel conflicted about my program right now because I just miss my people and I miss California. I don't know, but I'm having a hard time. It's making vlogging really hard, but, and, cause I don't want to be a downer all the time. Well, come here. Oh, the door is closed. I'm sorry. Let me open the door for you. Are you a little prince? Get what you want? Oh my God, look at this cat. Hmm, did you hear me crying? This is Prince. Say hello. You say hi. Yeah, you're a good cat. You're a good cat. If you can have a pet while you're in college, grad school, whatever, I highly recommend it because they are huge mood boosters. Um, anyways, yeah, so that's what's been going on. Um, hanging out with him has already made me feel a little bit better. <laughs> Um, it's Thursday. I don't have classes on Thursdays, so I've been running the accountability workshop and trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of my time. I definitely have things I need to do, but my ADHD is making it hard for me to figure out how to do them. That email made me cry, so I'm just like, um, you know, trying to figure out what to do with myself next. God. My ballet stuff. Um... All right, everyone, hello. It is currently Friday and I am in Manhattan. Friday mornings, I do work for Accepted Society. I run an accountability workshop, but then Friday evenings I have to myself and I like to come into Manhattan and I go and I dance ballet. As someone who has been struggling with the transition to living in a big city and going to grad school, finding something that I could do every week that I enjoy, that I know makes me feel good and it also just like makes me forget about where I am. Ballet is very physically intensive and it requires a lot of concentration so for about two hours I essentially just forget that I'm in grad school and it's lovely. So anyways I am currently in Manhattan. I am in a reading room in one of the buildings for the new school. Ballet is just around the corner and I got here two hours early on accident. The public transportation system has not been kind to me. I cannot figure it out. Every time I think I'm gonna be on time, I'm late. Every time I think I'm gonna be late, I'm early. So I got here two hours early and decided to come to school and hang out and catch up on some of my readings. This is like the first time I've ever been in the city where I've had a room completely to myself that's quiet and has at the other end a view of green foliage. <laughs> which are things that I did not know would bring me the utter amount of bliss it has brought me this evening. <laughs> One of the things I've struggled with is just like, I have ADHD, which 
means I have a difficulty filtering out extraneous stimulus. When I'm walking around the city during the day, the amount of noise, the visual activity, even the weather sometimes gets to be really, really overwhelming and it puts me in a bad mood essentially. <laughs> to have a quiet room for like the first time is just chef's kiss. Anyways, <laughs> I am currently working on a reading for a class called The Materiality of Fashion, which I'm super excited about because that class is basically archaeology but with clothing. This reading is from a book called Clothing as Material Culture. The chapter is titled The Other Half, The Material Culture of New Fibers by Carrie O'Connor. It's interesting so far, it's basically saying that anthropologists have long talked about clothing as a means of communication and a form of symbolism, a way of negotiating identity and status, but fashion studies has largely kept anthropologists out of the conversation, and so I, I think the point is that they are arguing for us to lean on anthropological work a little bit more. I don't know, I'm only like three paragraphs into it, but you know, I think that's pretty cool being an anthropologist myself. <laughs> I'm enjoying the reading so far. I've talked your guys ear off. I have a lot to catch on because I haven't really been vlogging, but I'm going to save that for next week's like weekly vlog because, and I probably should have gotten to this point way earlier, after ballet I'm hopping on the train and going up to Connecticut to visit Kaylin Grace Apple, the redhead academic. Yeah, I just haven't like gotten the chance to go up there and hang out with her yet since moving to the East Coast, so I'm really excited to do that. I have about an hour until ballet starts, so I'm gonna keep reading until I gotta go. That actually ended up being really, really productive and I'm so glad I came here early and had the chance to sit in one of the buildings to study. That was 10 out of 10, but it's time for ballet now.